Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, we are going to discuss about an important class of antibiotic that is carbapenem. Many of you are using carbapenems like meropenem, ertapenem, imipenem, doripenem. So many drugs are available in this group, but many a times the usage is unwanted or it can produce drug resistance. Okay. Carbapenems are beta-lactam antibiotic like any other penicillins or cephalosporins. But they differ from these classes by their chemical structure. They, are ES, they, are, they can act against ESBL producing bacteria. We will see what is ESBL afterwards. The drugs come, coming under this class is imipenem alone or imipenem silastatin combination, mirapenem, ertapenem, doripenem. These are the four major uh, drugs coming in this carbapenem groups. Now, we will see what is beta-lactam antibiotic. Beta-lactam antibiotics are broad classes of antibiotics. They contain a ring that is beta-lactam ring in their molecular structure. Most beta-lactam antibiotics work by inhibiting the cell wall synthesis in a bacteria. So, but many organisms has developed resistance against this beta-lactam ring. ESBL is a type of bacteria which has uh, developed a resistance against this beta-lactam antibiotics. They are called as extended spectrum beta-lactamases. They are type of bacteria which are resistant to many of this antibiotic, that penicillin group of antibiotic. Beta-lactamase enzyme which inactivate beta-lactam agents that is penicillin group are the most important mediators of resistance to the antimicrobials in gram negative enteric bacilli. So when you see the report of culture report of many gram negative bacilli they will be written it will be written that ESBL positive that means you cannot use many of the first line penicillins or cephalosporins. So ESBLs are resistant to drugs such as uh, first and second, third generation of cephalosporins, uh, penicillins and many other normal antibiotics which we routinely use in clinical practice. Beta-lactamase inhibitors like clavulinic acid, sulbactam, tazabactam, they, are, they can be used with penicillins and produce some amount of um, uh, action against this type of bacteria, but they are not, also cannot beat this ESBLs. They can uh, prevent the growth of some uh, beta-lactam uh, uh, producing uh, bacteria, but they cannot act against ESPLs. Only carbapenems like meropenem, mertapenem, imipenem, celestatin are most reliably act against this ESPL producing bacteria strains. So once you see ESPL positive, either you have to go for a uh, antibiotic like vipracillin tazabactam or meropenem, doripenem, ertapenem like that. Okay. So, if you see the antimicrobial activity of carbapenem, do not think that it will cover everything. It will not cover MRSA, it will not cover Clostridium difficile. So, other bacteria, most of the bacteria it may cover. So, we will see gram positive bacteria, Streptococcus pyogens, Streptococcus viridans, Streptococcus pneumonia, Staphylococcus aureus except MRSA, uh, Endrococci. Listeria, all these things will be covered in gram positive uh, group. Gram negative mainly H influenza, Neisseria, Enterobacteriaceae, Pseudomonas, um, all these things will be covered by uh, carbapenems. Anaerobic bacteria, Bacteroids, Fragilis, uh, most other anaerobes except Clostridium difficile, Spirochids, Borrelia, and Leptospira. So, we can see many patients who is uh, uh, having uh, Leptospirosis. We see uh, if the patient is already on meropenem, there is no need to add penicillin because it, this leptospira will be covered by most of the antibiotic. Here actually meropenem is not required, but you can see some practice they give meropenem. But since the leptospira is coming as positive, they can they will add penicillins that is not required. So meropenem will cover or carbapenems will cover leptospira also. Now, we will see the imipenem cellastatin. It is available in 0 0.5, 0 0.5 or 1 by 1. There is a combination of imipenem with a uh, cellastatin. 
usual dose is 1 gram every 6 to 8 hours. Maximum dose can be given 4 gram per day. So, why celastatin is added with uh, imipenem is it prevents the renal metabolism of imipenem. So, you can get a longer time for this antibiotic. It distributes all around the body, but concentration is more in the abdomen. That is why it is mainly used in abdominal infections, but the concentration is concentration is very less in CSF. So, it is not a good choice in brain infections. So, it is mainly used in intra-abdominal infection, but it can be used in lung infection also, but mainly used in intra-abdominal gynecological urinary tract infections. Severe intra-abdominal infection you have to use 1 gram TID. So, normal infections you can give 0.5 TID, but in severe infection 1 gram TID is a dose. Next drug is Doripenem. Doripenem also mainly used in intra-abdominal infection. It is more active against Pseudomonas aerogenosa than other carbapenems. Dose of Doripenem is 500 mg as an infusion every 8 hours, 5 to 14 days. This, all these drugs should be uh, titrated according to the creatine clearance. Another important drug is Ertapenem. Ertapenem is mainly used as a OPD basis treatment. It should not be used in a patient who is having sepsis. This can be used in community acquired pneumonia, pelvic infection, urinary tract infection. No, usual dose is 1 gram OD for 3 to 10 days. So, there is an advantage. It can be used as an OP drug. It, should, it can be used as a single uh, dose one gram, like 1 gram every day. This drug also should be titrated according to creatine clearance. So, if you are giving as an infusion, it will have better effect than a uh, bolus dose. But advantage of this drug is single dose OP basis treatment is uh, possible with this drug. Another important drug is meropenem, which is very widely used and misused. Okay. Meropenem spectrum is almost same as imipenem, but remember this is a very good choice in uh, CSF infection also, but here you have to use slightly higher doses. So, this will be acting against even pseudomonas. Compared to imipenem, meropenem is more effective against enterobacteria and less active against gram positive bacteria. Meropenem is a bactericidal except against listeria monocytosis where it is bacteriostatic. So, it is a bactericidal uh, agent. So, it will kill the bacteria in most of the condition except in listeria. Listeria antibiotic of choice is ampicillin. So, we may not use this drug in listeria once you diagnose it. So, meropenem can be used in almost all infection except MRSA and we have now discussed listeria also. Dose of meropenem is normally 1 gram TID. In meningitis, you use a higher dose 2 gram TID. But remember, all these carbapenems, they are time dependent killers of bacteria. You have to give, they are not concentration dependent. They have to, you have to give a infusion over 3 4 hours, every 8 hours you have to give. So, in a normal infection, we give 1 gram infusion over 3 hours, every 8 hours. In meningitis, we use a higher dose, 2 gram uh, infusion every 8 hours. So, meropenem can also be used in melidiosis, catheter related bloodstream infection, cholangitis, febrile neutropenia and pneumonia. So, so many indications are there, where there also you can use meropenem. All these drugs, carbapenems should be adjusted according to your creatine clearance. So, one of the major side effect of carbapenem is seizure potential is very high. So, in a patient who is having renal failure, if you are giving a normal dose, the cumulative dose can produce seizures also. So, please understand, carbapenems are very higher class of antibiotics. Unwanted use will produce drug resistance. So, judiciously, we have to use these drugs. Thank you.